Rebecca Bab Larkham, Here. Supervisor Di Scafani. Here. I'll read the legal notice. Please. The town board of the town of Shandaken also calls for, uh, calls for a public hearing on a logging permit for Winnesook Incorporated, Oliveria, SBL 34.1-3 at 6.30 p.m. Wednesday, November 8, 2023. Proceeding the budget public hearing and at such time hearing any persons in favor against the logging permit at 7209 State Route 28, Shandaken, New York, 12480. And Mike is here from um, the company and I have all the paperwork. Uh, the secretary did send me the updated insurance, workman's comp and liability insurance. We don't need a bond because it's in a private road. So I have all that here and you guys got it all, I guess. You saw it? Yeah. And that's it. I open the public <laughs> hearing to anyone. Hello. Hello. Also, they did this last year, but never did. Yeah, no, so I that's know, good. I know. So, might you want to be good to just, you know, explain a little bit about so when people see perhaps trucks know, coming down from the beginning, coming down with lots of logs, yeah. they won't be surprised and they will understand. Mike, what's up? The microphone. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Mike. <laughs> just talk right into the microphone. How many board feet? How many acres? So more about how, how long is it going to take and, you know, just... Well, it's really weather dependent. Uh, three to four months, um, most likely. Okay. Um, so you, you'll start when? And... Well, it depends on the... Where are we? Wait for the, the ground to the free, ground freeze. Ground to freeze would be fine. Right. Yes, uh, that's overseen by the state forester, by the DEP forester, and another private consultant forester. Um, so it's pretty, uh, pretty well planned out. Lots of agency oversight. Right. <laughs> Anything else? I think you covered it. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Sorry. <laughs> you did very well. <laughs> Women are swooning at home over you. Yeah. <laughs> you guys have any questions? Uh, Peter got fed up. And he hates talking about lumber. It's <laughs> <laughs> all the board feet, you know? Yeah, all the paperwork. Yeah, yeah. 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 it is. If anything exceeds 100,000 board feet, we have to yeah, do it. Yeah, no, I Good. 
those microphones are great, but they don't, you have to be right into them. And then after COVID, nobody gets next to a microphone now. They don't get too close. So I was like, uh, you can't get like a like singer here. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we're going to come back um, if somebody else has a comment. Well, it's only five minutes. Yeah, yeah, five, minutes. Only five minutes for the next public hearing. Right, the next public hearing. Five minutes, so they will leave it on. Don't video me. Well, Got we don't want to lose them. Because I want to my nose or something. <laughs> <laughs> Confused, Miss Not One Resolution, a page. <laughs> <laughs> what? what did she do? She went into double sided. And, well, and, and, and like, with no so page. one resolution oh. starts here and ends with here. no break. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh normally be. she lines them up one resolution per page. Sell your mind for 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> you got a good one? <laughs> you got the long break. Right you could borrow it. <laughs> 20, 20 bucks to the budget so I can first, have piles. No, no, no. This comes out of personal money now. Next year. So you got to wait on that. I brought this one from. Yeah, I Look at this one ends here. It starts at 20. <laughs> and starts right there. No, I'll manage. I just like to complain. You could use mine. No, it's all right. I mean, there are solutions. Five bucks per month. Ooh. Cheaper. Peter's going to sell it to me for five, Kyle. Ooh, wow, well, you better go with him then. Assuming she has something to say. Oh my god. Oh what dial. Feet. Hi, Grace. Any questions about the timber permit, lady? And Sorry. Now, Mike will give another presentation. <laughs> he had slides and graphs and charts. <laughs> it was amazing. Many. <laughs> and we couldn't shut them up. Just would not stop. One of those people that just go on and on. He's passionate about lumber. Passionate. Passionate about lumber. <laughs> uh, 
All right, I make a motion we close the public hearing for the logging permit. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Make a motion we open the public hearing for the budget. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Town Board of the Town of Shandaga calls for a public hearing to review the 2024 preliminary budget to be held on Wednesday, November 8, 2023 at 645, preceding the regular monthly meeting. At such time, hearing any person in favor or against the preliminary budget, 7209 State Route 28, Shandaga, New York, 12480. And I added that the budget is available on our website, shandaga.us, or email the town clerk. Thank you, Joyce. Yes. from the 2023 budget that was um, provided online. But I did look at that and I had some questions. I'm wondering if you can answer. Uh, there's a line that's $1,000 for planning and management GIS, but there's $29,000 that's been spent on that line, but $1,000 in this budget. I'm just curious what that was. What line is it? Um, it's it's in the in the printout from the year to date analysis that was I'm provided. For it now. That was the GIS machine, wasn't it? Machine? Peter? So. No, I don't think so. All right. It does say GIS, but I don't. I don't know. But I don't. Think, I thought that was done the year before, so I don't. The GIS machine was around before I came in. Yeah, so and I they just never did the project. They were going to do the mapping and everything. They had a machine for it way back. Unfortunately, it was about 15 years ago. I know. When our budget got left. Uh, is this well, I think Peter went to get something for you. Do you want to move yeah. on and come back uh, to it? Oh, yeah, okay. Um, yes, the page. And, and then I, I was looking uh, at. Page, well, no, it's not when, page. When you it's go page to six on this, but yeah. Good. Okay. Oh, what's the line number? Shit. You ready? Yeah. A8688641. All right, let's see if I can find it. I believe that's. Yeah, no, that's, that's that. Yeah, that's that's right. Well, okay. Okay. Um, well, in the, in in the budget, um, the preliminary budget printout, there's a number of locations where there's um, employee benefits, in New York State retirement, and some of them are going down, and some of them are going up, and some of them stay the same, and I'm just curious. I believe that staffing changes. What, that because means. like if a person's because, in a different tier. Because if people make more money, I thought most people were making more money, so it would seem that all of those, it's like pension based, right? So like all, like it's income based, salary it, based pension, so all of those. Although if you, if you have a person from a higher tier who, or a lower tier who leaves employment and then you hire a new person in and they're in a different tier, even if salaries go up, you can have a line go down. So we have expected employee changes as predicted in there or something? Specifically? I, mean, I, I think it was a, a place what? where I found that there was excess from the year prior. And so I reduced it because we didn't need as much in there. Okay. And then I did notice also in the year-to-date expenditure that some of the fuel utility charges are much higher than were budgeted for, but this year's budget is not as high as those. And I'm wondering, does that mean we haven't budgeted enough for what anticipated fuel costs are, or do we have reasons to believe that? Well, it was a higher fuel. cost of fuel this year that made it higher, and I'm anticipating it going down a little bit. Okay. Just your best estimate is that fuel will be cheaper in the next year. I mean, it just seems wise to budget something that we already have gone over budget as is to budget. It 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 goes it does go back and forth. And then my last question is. Um, the short-term rental license fees, I'm, I'm wondering um, 
how they, they can remain static if the number of fees and the number of permits may change and when people do get put in off of the waiting list, their number of bedrooms and their fee costs may be different. So I'm just curious how we, we can expect 170,000 and also I think it would be appropriate to have the breakdown of how those license fees are expended in the budget because as, as you know, fees are supposed, license fees are supposed to be somewhat relative to the cost of implementing the licensing program. So if at some point we are asked to demonstrate or prove that our fees are appropriately um, relative to our costs, it would make sense to already have that information broken down and not have to go and backpedal and try to put together how we spent the money and how it was appropriate. Thank you. Okay. This is the first one she was asking about, an administration. A eight six eight six four admin C V. Yeah, I have to ask Barbara what, what that was spent on. So you know, yeah, it's exactly. Yeah. Number. I don't know where that was spent. Or why? I'll have to I'll talk to Barb. Okay. The thousand Yeah, that one. Yeah. That's so what odd. I mean something must have been paid. And it was used, that number was used. That's why it's marked there on the P&L sheet. But I think it was just a misappropriation from one line to another because we haven't done any GIS work. that the board consider allocating some funds to the Phoenicia Farmers Market. Um, we did pay, I think it was $1,500 out of our budget for a port potty that was there. Um, and there are other expenses and we do provide a pretty, pretty, a good, business? pretty good service. A you know? business we're, on our... We're not a business. We're, we're, we're a non-for-profit organization with a, with a um, filed... 501c3 and a, and a mission. Okay. Um, okay. We do donate food, excess food regularly to the food pantry. Okay. We also provided boxes of fresh fruit multiple, probably three or four times to the uh, Shandik and Recreation kids during the summer. And um, we have also, during COVID, we provided excess food that we often purchased from the farmers with our own funds so that they would you know have had a good day as well and donated those you know fresh produce to the library program both in Phoenicia when it was still happening and up in Pine Hill so every week we we you know we donate produce we're a 501c3 Sophie goes to the food pantry with boxes of fresh vegetables once a week and it would be nice to be recognized as an important community service. Thank you. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if we'll add a line for that, but certainly with the bathrooms hopefully repaired at Glenbrook come next spring, um, we have money for porta potties and parish getting more traffic than it ever has. I think that's a totally reasonable request. And, you know, we didn't really charge last year. Yeah. So we don't, you know, I mean, we don't charge that for profit. Well, not-for-profits generally don't use a, a facility once a week, either. I mean, it's, there's a... Absolutely, absolutely. And we all like the Festival of the Voice. There's no getting away from that. I, I do not, but that's just me. But the farm of the park, I think, the like farmer's market, yes. Yeah. <laughs> like the That's what farmer's I mean. market more than the festival. Thank you very much for your donations as well. Did somebody yeah. have to call anybody and say go for next year? I would, I believe so. Yeah. We, we also purchased a, 
we also purchased our own ballers with you know like yeah. all of the all of the marketing cost. management things were all you know purchased. You know where I got those columns, so purchased by back in the back, so we got the nice slide. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like that you never go off topic. Thank you. Were there any other public comments on the budget? And there's a few folks who arrived. Five but minutes. this is the window, yeah. so I mean, if we you have, have a question, now would be the time. Uh, I believe there's actually a copy, copy right, right there. Be interested in page six, about four lines down. <laughs> Just guessing. <laughs> if you were to take a stab at it. Still in the middle of a, of a public hearing for the budget. If anyone has anything to say about it, come on up. Any comments? We have four minutes. Did you reduce the museum's budget? No. No. Actually went up. It's just on a different line. It's on a different line? It's, on, it's under the contractual line. On, yes. Thank you, Rob. If you look at the total under the museum, you'll see the increase. Sorry, Jackie. Uh, just came from work. My attire is not exactly <laughs> board professional. Point three quarter percent. Ambulance personnel? Ambulance personnel service. Well that's a that's a seven percent increase for ambulance. Well, it says eight on the carriage budget. No. Okay. So anyway. They're going up eight, six percent. The retirement on general is going down eleven percent. Similarly on highway. They're going up six, seven percent, but their retirement benefits are staying the same. The retirement benefits, they're all in the same group. It's all New York State retirement, highway in general. They go up according to the salaries, 
because they're all based on the tier system. So if the salaries go up, the retirement pension funding from the town goes up accordingly. I was going down to 10% on the general side and maintaining on the highway side when salaries are going up 7%. Um, last year, the number was a little inflated, so I just put it down to where it needed to be. I didn't know well, I just, not exactly. I just, I just noticed that they all were different. Yeah. Some went up, yeah. some went down. They didn't stay the same across yeah. the board. Yeah. 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 Tier, different tiers. Over, over Last year's budget, yeah. It's uh, 7 o'clock. It is 7 o'clock. Uh, make a motion that we close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Make a motion we open a regular meeting. Let's stand for the pledge, please. Second. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please, Here. 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 Make a motion to approve last month's mean minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 For the budget, we have an increase for general for at 2.34% and highway is at 3.9%. There's a slight additional correction, addition correction on the first line, but we're still under the tax cap. The intersection of Route 28 and 42 are being realigned. Work should be finished already tonight. I, they may have to do more lines and more stop signs. Be careful there. I believe uh, what uh, Creekside Drive is open again. Yep. All right. Thank God. Thank God. <laughs> Uh, the first crossing on Bonneview Avenue is closed for the next three to four weeks and will be reopened with a sturdier structure. It'll be a temporary structure and the final replacement is slated to be installed next summer. We're also putting in a grant to engineer and design and replace the second crossing up the way and county is replacing the third crossing up by the water plant next year also. There's a resolution tonight on the municipal review of financial controls. Uh, and this was suggested by Robert uh, about a year ago and we all thought it was a good idea and basically it's gonna look at efficiency and just general health of our financial system. Uh, on Wednesday, November 15th at 5.30 at the Pine Hill Community Center, they're hosting an informal information session regarding the rail trail up there in Pine Hill. Um, it's the next, it's the segment from High Mount to Big Indian. They're planning on doing it in a few years and they will have some actual public hearings, professional public hearings. Ulster County Trails Advisory Committee Chair Kevin Smith and member Carl Beard will be there offering information and taking questions. Our next regular meeting is December 4th. Communications, Joyce? Everything on channel 23 through spectrum cable. Um, okay. All right. Committee reports. Ambulance. Kyle. October 2023 report. Total calls received 39. Mutual aid given 2. Town of Olive 1. Town of Lexington. Mutual aid received 0. Another busy month for the ambulance service has passed. To date, we have reached 423 calls for service in 2023 and are anticipating surpassing 2022's call numbers by the beginning of December. It is without a doubt that the need for services are increasing. Thank you to the town board and the taxpayers of the town of Shandaken for realizing the importance of sustaining immediate access to emergency medical services, EMS, for our citizens and visitors. As many of you are aware, many of, us wear, many of us wear several hats in EMS that work at our ambulance service, which allows a unique perspective of county, regional, statewide, and even national EMS status. 
Two incredibly daunting issues affecting the adequate delivery of EMS, particularly at the advanced life support level, paramedic level, are lack of qualified employees and lack of training centers to provide that training. The closest schools that provide paramedic level training programs are located in Poughkeepsie and Cobleskill and require a year and a half minimum of training. Qualified employees exist in the workforce. However, pay dis disparities between agencies. However, pay disparities disparities between agencies are such that it becomes difficult for us to compete with larger commercial agencies and even local agencies that have changed rates to retain their paramedics. Empress EMS is paying experienced paramedics over forty dollars an hour. Neighboring Woodstock Fire District is currently paying paramedics thirty dollars an hour. All of First Aid is paying $20 an hour for EMTs and $18 an hour for drivers. Compounding this issue is that our regular paramedic level backup service, Mobile Life Support, has been purchased by a much larger company, Empress EMS. Empress is dealing with the same manpower issues as all of us and cannot provide regular backup services that Shandaken and many other municipalities in Ulster County were used to. This ripple effect directly affects us as our backup is more so unavailable than available. Worse though, other municipalities within the county relying on commercial ambulance services for coverage are facing contracts priced at over $1 million per year. We're currently speaking to neighboring towns in regard to mutual aid agreements for second calls in our coverage area, have a procedure for calling back, empl back employees, and are fortunate enough to be surrounded by wonderful agencies that are always willing to lend a hand. The reality is that unless we are able to recruit and retain current employees and perhaps get a few new ones, the alternative is much more expensive. Stay safe out there. Richard muller Lyley, EMTP, Chief of Department, Shandakin Ambulance. Thanks, Kyle. You're welcome. Ellie, building? Building Department, month of October. The Building Department issued 20 building permits, 13 certificates of compliance, four certificates of occupancy, three stop work orders, and what one floodplain permit. Thanks, Ellie. Chad? Joyce, I'm going to stand at the mic tonight. All right. <laughs> and uh, I just want to point out that I'm better dressed than Rich Mulo. Well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we had 173 calls, seven arrests, and 45 uh, summons issued. But more importantly tonight, there's a resolution to hire two individuals that have ties to the town of Shandakin, which is probably the first time that we're hiring two people from Shandakin since I've been the chief. Um, so Officer Matt Shields is uh, completing the police academy as we speak. He's got a couple weeks left before he graduates. And then uh, Joe Ciardi um, grew up in Shandakin. His family still lives here. Started in Shandakin a couple years before I did. Went to the city of Poughkeepsie, had a very distinguished career, retired recently, and wants to come back. So I'm glad to have him. He's certainly going to be an asset to us. And uh, welcome, Officer Shields. Glad to have you, Matt. Thank you. Thanks, Chad. Uh, anything from Phoenicia Water? Pine Hill Water? Uh, just a side note. Uh, Mr. Mullally wishes he could be here tonight. He had a family um, issue he had to deal with. Thanks, Kyle. Um, Pine Hill Water, please be on the lookout. We found a, a, a water access cover taken off and actually unscrewed and left loose. Uh, if anybody's up in Pine Hill, keep an eye out for people who might be doing that. Um, Ethan was notified and he re-secured it back on. Museum, Joseph. Uh, the <clears throat> museum is open three days a week, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from 10 to 4. Uh, the museum held a memorial service for its former director, Kathleen Myers. It was attended by some 40 people, friends, and family. It was a deeply moving service that included thoughts, memories, prayers of respect, love, and gratitude, followed by Indian drumming 
had a prayer sent out to the four directions of the planet. A 56 inch state of the art flat screen media center is now up and running, providing a rich media experience for visitors. This includes the entire YouTube library, large scale display capability of lecture for lecture presentations, PCs, Mac, iOS, Android, DVDs, USB, VHS, and CDs. The museum will continue developing an inventory system to log and track all items in the museum. The museum's website at www.shendakennymuseum.org is getting updated and the mobile version is being redesigned and updated by Eric Roth. A PayPal donate link is now active on the donate page of the site. I'm working on projects to freshen up the museum with Bill and Mary Lou, including new exhibits, cleanup day, guest, lect uh, guest lecture series, applying for grants, and continued posts on Facebook. This Saturday, we kick off our lecture series with a presentation by noted author Evan T. Pritchard, an ancient Indian spiritual, on, on ancient Indian spiritual rock structures residing in Shandaken and southern New York State. A local resident, Jim Wilson, will continue doing some building maintenance jobs, including installing a new dehumidifier for the entire building. There were 38 visitors to the museum in October, some being from Los Angeles, Woodstock, and New York City. One of them recently donated a beautiful 1905 Indian horned phonograph that now resides in the section pertaining to opera singer Amelita Gallacrucci. I would like to thank the town board and supervisor for working with us during our recent transition. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Sam Parks and Rec. I'll get up to the mic as well today. I'm a little bit longer than usual, but. Um, our last meeting was held on October 8th, where we interviewed three individuals for Smith Park manager position, as Manny Jean-Pierre has stepped down from that role. Upon completion of the interviews, we thought it best to include everyone on our committee. Each, indiv each individual has a unique experience um, that would be helpful to the committee in future projects. A resolution with our suggestions for the committee changes will be put forth tonight. In addition to the suggestions on this resolution, we have created a new role. Christina Varga will be in charge of resource development for Parks and Recreation. Christina has a background in journalism and a plethora of media outlet resources, and we feel she would be able to spread the word about our different events and projects in the parks. Um, we continue to distribute community and youth surveys for feedback on what the community wants to see on our designs and plans for the parks projects. We've received feedback from over 100 community surveys. Um, side note, if anyone brings a youth survey back to Ulster Savings Bank, they get a little gift for it. Autumn, Babs, and I have been working on raising funds and seeking grants for playground updates. We realize that playgrounds are a subset of needs for our parks, including the proposed Rock Cup Park in Mount Tremper. Our success in raising funds requires updating of the 2013 Shandaken Parks Master Plan, acquiring surveys of all parks, and having dedicated legal assistance to secure leases and ownership of Parrish Field and Big Indian Parks. To get the ball rolling for all Shandaken Parks, we would like to submit a T-Mobile grant, which is due on January 2nd, 2024. Myself would, as the contact, Kevin as the liaison. We would be requesting $50,000 for the creation of a natural play playground and starting with Glenbrook Park. An inspection has been made and clarified what safety issues need to be addressed. The aforementioned community surveys have assembled feedback on desired elements for Glenbrook, including the playground. The committee has engaged KAN Design to create a design, a rendering, and a construction document, including a detailed budget of the project. The committee did not um, get a competing bid on this um, 
in the interest of achieving one update quickly and because these funds have already been raised from private sources via the committee's GoFundMe campaign. Future aspects of this project will require competitive bid requests. KAN will make this shovel ready for the proposed for the purposes of the T-Mobile request by mid-December in time for us to complete the application in January. If we're not awarded the T-Mobile funding, we will still have a detailed plan and drawings to further our continued fundraising. Um, Glenbrook is owned outright by Shandaken and the town is already resolved to update that pavilion. We believe that putting a shine on Glenbrook would be the easiest to achieve of all the Shandaken parks and provide much needed win to our continued fundraising wings, especially a New York State Parks request anticipated in the summer of 2024 via the consolidated funding application process to be led by Robert Drake. As for the DEC Smart Growth Grant that Peter brought to my attention, our thinking um, informed by community input from the park surveys is that this request might best be used for a lawyer specializing in real estate and surveyor fees for all parks. Um, Babs spoke with Andy Garrison from the New York New Jersey Trail Conference who has already been in contact with the Real Properties Department of the Archdiocese of New York to discuss a land acquisition or lease of Parish Field. It would be in our best interest to join this conversation. Um, our Trex Bench Plastic Collection ends this Saturday, 11-11, but we've already exceeded our goal of 500 pounds of plastic collected, so we will be awarded a bench for one of our parks. A huge thank you to Autumn, who has picked up all the plastic from various locations throughout the six-month period we collected. We are looking for a volunteer to help collect plastic from our current locations and help the Phoenicia Elementary School hit their goal for a bench as well. Please let us know if you're interested. We are revisiting the Shandagan Skate Park thanks to Edric Henderson, a young local resident who would love nothing more than to enjoy the outdoors while skateboarding. Kevin um, and I had discussed some information that was previously put together for a skate park so that Edric is well informed on what he needs to do moving, moving forward. We suggested a youth commission and some grant options. There have already been pledged donations for this project, but we're looking for a nonprofit to be the fiscal sponsor for these donations um, so that they can be included as a tax write-off for donors. That's it on my parks part. I'm sure you're gonna mention this, but I'm just gonna make mention while I'm up here. Uh, Turkey Trot, Saturday, 11:25. The proceeds from the trot will be given to the Parks and Recreation Committee for our upgrade project. I want to thank Shama Davis and Gisi Bella for considering us again this year. Phoenicia, Rot Phoenicia Rotary and the Jerry Bender Memorial Thanksgiving Community Dinner will be held on 11:18 at 2 p.m. at Parish Hall. American Legion Auxiliary will hold their children's Christmas party the morning of 12:12 at the Parish Hall. The deadline to sign your child up is 11:22. I have flyers if anyone needs them. And Miracle on Main Street Parade of Lights and the tree lighting will be held on 12-2. All are welcome in the Parade of Lights. Lineup is at 4 p.m. at the elementary school. We stop at the ice cream station for the tree lighting and then the parish hall for live music from the Rock Academy show band. A meet and greet with Mr. and Mrs. Claus, free food, crafts, and face painting. And that's what I have. And I have flyers on all those events. I'm so tired. <laughs> I'm so tired. I know. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. That was good. All right. Um, public comments on resolutions. Generally, the terms start in January, so if you're appointing people now, they would be technically interim appointees, and I'm not sure whether they're filling the last of a two-year, two of, you know, the last two years of a three-year term, or, so I just would appreciate some clarity in the resolution on, on the, those Did you do details. the resolution? I did that resolution. Okay. We don't have a time. typically park managers last about six months. <laughs> well, I don't even know. I think the, the term is five years, right? Three years? It's three years. Three years. But why don't we will just make these as, you know, till the end of the year. 
yeah, and then we'll and then we'll figure out in January what the terms are. We should last that long. Sure. Don't change this. Any other comments? Okay, start us off, Kevin. Uh, two motions. Two motions, all right. Uh, I'd make a motion to accept the resignation of John Michelotti from the Parks and Rec Committee. I second. Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then I would also motion um, to make Nolan Wilder the interim uh, quote unquote Rock Cut Park Manager, he's been helping out. It's a, a position that will be reappointed once we move a little bit farther in the process, but he's been acting as kind of a point man on that project. So. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Go no one. Resolution 119.23, resolution to pay all bills. Whereas the Department of Audit and Control require town boards to sign and inspect all vouchers coming to the town for payment to number and total amounts from each fund, Therefore, be it resolved that the town board authorize the following vouchers paid. General, $349,266.51. Highway, $174,570.32. Phoenicia Water, $11,732.09. Pine Hill Water, $2,572.26. No numbers for Phoenicia Lights or Chichester Lights. Pine Hill Lights, $28.48 for the sign. Shandicken Septic, $2,610.83 and the cemetery account $3,000 for a total of $543,780.59 and move its adoption. Second. Board Member Drake? Yes. Board Member Nysel? Yes. Board Member Steen? Yes. Board Member Devlock? Yes. Board Member Steen? Yes. Resolution number 120-23, resolution adopting 2024 preliminary budget as 2024 town budget. Whereas the town of Shindakin has prepared a 2024 preliminary budget for review, therefore be it resolved, the Town Board of the Town of Shandaken, following a public hearing held at 6.45 p.m. on Wednesday, November 8, 2023, hereby adopts the 2024 preliminary budget as amended as the 2024 town budget for the Town of Shandaken and move its adoption. Second. Board Member Drake? Yes. Board Member Nysel? Yes. Board Member Steen? Yes. Board Member Devlock? Yes. Board Member Steen? Yes. Resolution 2123, resolution of the town board and town of Shandaken determining that there are no adverse impacts on the environment for a timber harvest logging permit. Whereas the town board is looking to approve a timber harvest logging permit application for Winnesook Inc. 57 and 93 Winnesook Club Road, Oliveria, SBL 34 point dash one dash three. Whereas the possible environmental impacts of the approval of the logging permit for Winnesook and Inc. have been considered by the town board. Now, now, therefore, be it resolved that the town board has determined that the approval of the logging permit for Winnesuk Inc. will not have an adverse, significant adverse impact on the environment, and be it further resolved that the town board authorizes the supervisor to take such further steps as might be necessary to discharge the board's responsibility as lead agency for this action, including but not limited to the issuance of a negative declaration consistent with this regulation resolution and I'm going to do the short EIS right now EAS instruction for completing the project the applicant the project sponsor and in sponsor information is Winnesuk Inc the name of action is logging permit in excess of 100,000 board feet project location SBL 34-1-3 forest management is the proposed action applicant name Mike Fabian, B&B &B Forest. The address is P.O. Box 907, Cairo, New York, 12413. Does the proposed action only involve the legislative adoption of a plan, local law, ordinance, administrative rule, or regulation? No. Does the proposed action require a permit, approval, or funding from any other government agency? Yes. Does the total acreage... Uh, the total acreage of the site proposed is 99 acres. Uh, the total acreage of the whole project site is 462. 
the land use on the, and the adjourn, adjoining and the near proposed actions is residential. The proposed action A, a permitted use under the zoning regs and B, consistent with the adopted comprehensive plan, yes and yes. Is the proposed action consistent with predominant characteristics of the existing build or natural landscape? Yes. Is the site of the proposed action located in or does it adjoin a state-listed critical environmental area? No. Will the proposed action be a substantial increase in traffic above present levels? No. Are public transportation services available at or near the site of the proposed action? No. Are any of the pedestrian accommodations or bicycle routes available on or near the site of proposed action? No. Does the proposed action meet or exceed the state emergent energy code requirements? If the proposed action will exceed the requirements described, yes. Will the proposed action connect to an existing public or private water? No. Will the proposed action connect to existing wastewater unit utilities? No. Does the site contain a structure that listed on either state or national register of, in, of historic places? No. Is the proposed action located in an archaeologically sensitive area? No. Does the proposed the portion of the site of the proposed action or lands adjoining the proposed action contain wetlands or other wet water bodies regulated by federal, state, or local agency? No. Would the proposed action physically alter or encroach into any existing wetland or water body? No. Identify the typical habitat that occurred or are likely to be found on the project site, forest. Does the site of the proposed action contain any spe species of animal associated habitats listed by the state or federal government as threatened or endangered? No. Is the project site located in the 100 year floodplain? No. Will the proposed action create stormwater discharge either from point or non point sources? No. Will the stormwater discharges flow to adjacent properties? No. Will the stormwater discharges be directed to establish conveyance systems, runoff, and storm drains? No. Does the proposed action include construction or other activities that result in the impoundment of water or other liquids? No. Has the site of the proposed action or adjoining property been the location of an active or closed solid waste management facility? No. Has the site of the proposed action or adjoining property been the subject of remediation ongoing or completed for hazardous waste? No. I affirm the information provided above is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge. Peter Disclafani, Town Supervisor. Second. Yes. Please. Yeah. So, so uh, for future reference, you do not need to read the entire part one of the applicant's EAL. You need to look at that yourselves at home or before you review the application. And then when you sit in front of the board, you know, in front of the public, you go through the part two and the part three, the evaluation of the impact. It's much shorter. And it, and it really does just go through the basic you know, evaluation of impact, so you don't need to go through all of that. And then at the end of your discussion of the evaluation of impact, you can sign the document and that constitutes your negative declaration, and then you can vote. Thank so you. So that you don't have to read all of the project sponsor information. That's for people, it's like the existing conditions, and, and you're, you're to evaluate them. We had a nice little discussion when you stepped away yeah. where you talked about the different, the lack of tra traffic or how much traffic, the, and, and that's the evaluation of the impacts. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. So, so you don't have to read it all. Well, we don't have to, but we can. Well, you, you can, but you also have to go through all the different, yeah. you have, if you're going to read the part one and go through the part two and the part three as well, the part I'm one doesn't satisfy In favor. No. Okay. Board member Drake? In favor, yes. Board member Nysel? Yes. Board Member Steen? Yes. Board Member Walker? Yeah. Contract, so provides a decent time. Yes. Thank you. One day you'll get something really hard and you'll know what to do. <laughs> oh, 
Resolution 122-23, Resolution of the Town Board of the Town of Shendake in approving a timber harvest logging permit. Whereas the Town Board has received and reviewed a timber harvest logging permit application for Winnesook Incorporated 57-93, Winnesook Club Road, Olivaria, SBL 34-1-3. Whereas the possible environmental impacts of the logging permit for Winnesook Incorporated have been incorporated by the Town Board and said Board determines a negative declaration under State Environmental Quality Review. Therefore, be it resolved that the Town Board hereby approves said logging permit for Winnesook Incorporated as long as all legal requirements continue need to be met and move its adoption. Second. Yes. 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 Resolution number 123-23, Highway Auction Obsolete Vehicles and Equipment. Whereas the Town of Shandaken has identified several pieces of equipment that, he, that they have deemed obsolete, and whereas the town would like to offer the vehicle and equipment up for auction, whereas the following vehicles and equipment have been identified as obsolete. 1999 International 4800 VIN 1HTSEADR2YH268685-2007 Chevy Avalanche VIN 3GNFK123170G177753 2007 Dodge Durango VIN 1D8HB48PO7F558655 1998 International 4800 VIN 1HTSEADR7XH654954 2019 International 7500 bumper only 2020 International 7500 bumper only 2024 International 7500 bumper only 1988 Elgin Sweeper, 2008 Subaru Station Wagon. Therefore, be it resolved that the town board hereby authorized to place the above mentioned items up for bid through Absolute Auctions and Realty Inc. P.O. Box 1739, 45 South Avenue, Pleasant Valley, New York, 12569. Phone number 845-635-3169, extension 110, fax 845-635-3169 five one four zero and move its adoption. Yes. Plus, Second. Uh, Plus. Yeah. I already added that later. You had an old copy. Oh. <laughs> Plus <laughs> Plus assorted obsolete parts. Plus assorted obsolete parts. Yes. 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 Resolution 124-23, Town Police Department. Whereas the Town of Shandaken is a town of the second class, and whereas there is a Town Police Department, and whereas two officers have been recommended by the police commissioners to be hired part-time, therefore be it resolved that pursuant to town law of the state of New York, section 21B, the town board hereby appoints the following individuals as part-time police officers to receive compensation as indicated. For officers completing training and academy, individual remains responsible for associated cost of set training and education. Name, Joseph Chiardi, compensation 2260 per hour, contingent upon completion of background investigation. And Matt Shields at $13.20 per hour, contingent upon completion of background investigation, completion of academy training. And that said, police officers shall have all powers conferred upon police officers by the general laws of the state of New York, including but not limited to, and such powers not inconsistent with law, as are herein after set forth and that said police officers shall have all powers designated in section 2.20 of the criminal procedure law of the state of New York and shall have the following special duties. One, to enforce all local laws, ordinances, and regulations of the town of Shandaken. Two, to enforce the vehicle and traffic law of the state of New York to the extent that police officers may be so permitted by the general laws of the state of New York. And three, to enforce such penal statutes as police officers are permitted to enforce pursuant to the general laws of the state of New York and in furtherance of said special duties, police officers are hereby authorized to use of a town vehicle to be known as police officer's vehicle, which may be equipped with emergency lights in accordance with applicable sections of the vehicle and traffic law, and may use the state and county radio to the extent permitted by general laws of the state of New York, and may carry firearms while on duty in compliance with the general laws of the state of New York pertaining to police officers generally, and move its adoption. Second. Board Member Drake? Yes. Board Member Nicely? Yes. Board Member Van Blocken? Yes. Board Member Steen? Yes. Supervisor Lisa Yes. 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 Yes.
Thank you. Resolution number 125, 2023, resolution appointing park managers for Smith Park and Parish Field. Whereas under Article 20 of the Town Law, the Town Board shall designate all appointed officers and employees of the Town. Therefore, be it resolved that Nick Torres be appointed as member of the Shandaken Parks and Rec Committee and manager of Smith Park Pine Hill at no compensation. And be it further resolved that Barbara Mansfield be appointed as a member of the Shandaken Parks and Rec Committee and manager of Parish Field Phoenicia. Both appointments... Their, interim term. Their terms expire at the end of the year. Expire at the end of the year after which term lengths will be set. And move its adoption. Second. Board Member Drake? Yes. Board Member Nyssa? Yes. Board Member Steve? Yes. Board Member Van Barker? Yes. Yes. Resolution 126, 2023. Resolution to purchase a new highway vehicle, whereas the Town of Shandaken Highway Superintendent has identified one 2024 Dodge Ram 3500 with stainless steel body, dump body, and plow as a replacement vehicle, and whereas the town highway superintendent has identified this vehicle using the NYS OGS contract bid, therefore be it resolved the town of Shandaken Town Board does authorize the supervisor to approve the purchase of one 2024 Dodge Ram 3500 4x4 with stainless steel dump body and plow VIN number, blah, blah, blah. Last four, three, two, five, two from Sawyer Motors, Saugerties, New York, one, two, four, seven, seven, not to exceed the amount of $99,000, and I move its adoption. Second. Yes. 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 Resolution 127-23, perform a municipal review of financial controls, whereas it is the duty of the supervisor and town board to assure competent management of town finances with the use of independent auditors, and whereas after careful and thorough research, Bonadio & Co. was considered, and whereas Bonadio & Co. will, one, perform risk assessment services, sorry, will perform risk assessment services, will test controls over critical and high-risk financial and operational processes, and will review the corrective action plans developed in response to the risk assessment with key members of management, and will assess and test the effectiveness of the corrective action plan and discuss areas of concern or risk with key members of management to determine areas that need the greatest level of attention, and will use sampling techniques to test each high-risk financial and operational control within a designated audit area to determine if the town's internal control structure is operating as intended. Now, there, therefore, be it resolved, when a DO and co. will document the results of our engagement in a formal report to the town board. The results of our engagement in our report are intended for internal use only and not for any other purpose. Be it further resolved, when a DO and co. audit and accounting services will not exceed $15,000, and move its adoption. Second. Board Member Drake? Yep. Board Member Nyssen? Yes. Board yes. Board Member yes. 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 Yes, open public comments. <laughs> yeah. uh, do, do, yep. do you get like an outline of what, what they are going to look at? Or, or what is they gave us a brief out. They gave us a brief outline of what they're going to do, yes. But beyond what was in the resolution? Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Is that something you're absolutely going to see? Three page. 
There's a letter of engagement and uh, procedurally um, they in effect attempt to test everything. So this is policies and procedures both fiscal and employment wise including procurement, um, including in some cases how we approve things here procedurally. Um, and then uh, they also do find, uh, fiscal testing. So what that would be entail would be grabbing documents and then attempting to prove them out. Um, and then based off of that initial findings, then they go into more detail in those areas that either they see concern or we indicate concern. Um, and so it starts at a fairly broad scope, but little depth, and then works towards more depth in those areas that are deemed to be more actionable or more concern or higher risk. Um, and um, so the, the scope is in effect anything that may potentially be fiscal of nature, but obviously tends to focus uh, where, where you, you know, might have concerns. One of the conversations that I had in particular with them is that of course we are a small entity. And one of the concerns that nearly every small entity has is separation of duties. You, you simply cannot have separation of duties in a small situation to the degree that is generally recommended. Um, it, it's, it's literally not possible. I mean, by my sort of accounting, in order to hit all of the recommendations, you would almost have to have a minimum staff of 20 or 30 people. Simply not feasible for the town of Shandaken. But they have quite a bit of experience working with smaller municipalities and smaller nonprofits for the purposes of where do you have the best impact on minimizing risk. You can't necessarily separate responsibilities to the degree that might be absolute best practice, but through certain mechanisms and procedures, you can attempt to minimize it as much as possible as is feasible for an entity of our size. Um, and so uh, a lot of it is gonna be, to be candid, what I expect the output of this will be something of a laundry list of procedures that either need to be created or updated, policies that either need to be amended or passed, um, and probably some additional responsibilities amongst both staff and town board members um, in how we can best um, manage fiscal risk, fundamentally. So, I mean, that's hopefully somewhat of an answer Do, to that. Does the board have any particular areas that they'd like to focus on? Uh, I mean, my hope is that they sort of tell us a little bit that their scope starts out sufficiently expansive. Um, to be honest, in my conversations, I wanted to avoid leading them in a direction because I want them to go where they think there might be the greatest impact or the most benefit on our end. When the board receives the report, whenever that is, will the board make it public via the town website? My expectation is, is that that would be the case, yes. Anybody else? Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Make a motion to adjourn in the memory of Eve Smith. Second. Yeah. Good night, everyone.